What channel? Yeah. Welcome, my peeps. You know, so one love Africa. I'm my chef Ricardo, aka Slogan, right here. Yeah, and nice about to kick off this bad interview <laughs> with Ancese. Ancese. Yes. Yeah, man. <laughs> we are both under the place now. Although, fair place to live in. We live in Africa, but we are both are still, you know. Okay. Yeah, man. So, Ancese, where are you from? I'm from Kenya, mm -hmm. in the western part of Kenya, called Kisi. Yeah, yeah. yeah Kisi? Yes, that's where really? I'm from, yeah. Oh, there's a Kisi girl in nice little one. <laughs> Yo, I'm here later. <laughs> okay, go on, man, go on, man. You know, I leave, well, I left Jamaica and I left from India. You know, but it's nice, nice, like that. I left from India, the corona pandemic, the pandemic. Is it because at the time, too much mandate was going on, curfew, lockdown was taking place and I didn't like the feeling like I'm a prisoner. So that I had to pop myself, start look where to go and where to navigate to. And then I come across a place called Tanzania that's in Africa. And from there to here. Yo, I'm not telling the truth you know. I barely make it out. Because when the pandemic was taking place, a lot of people from the West was trying to leave to come to Africa. You know what I mean? You're lucky enough because we come earlier. You're gone. <laughs> what my chef is still is. Let me start joking around. Um, the transition was good. I like it, but we barely make it out. Because when I was leaving, I booked like several tickets. I tried to book several tickets and it couldn't go through. You understand? Until one finally got through. Why? It's because some African country was closed down. Because you know the transit to go through. Yeah, and yeah. some European country and Western countries closed down. Yeah. And I barely make it out. Like one day, if I didn't travel the day I left to come here, mm -hmm. I wouldn't make it. Mm -hmm. Because they actually say that you have 24 hours to get out and my clothes on the border. No airplane, no shipping, no nothing like that. Okay. And but it was good though. I like it. I enjoy it. I would do it again. Can I ask him one more question? Why yeah, did man. you why did you leave Tanzania and come to Kenya? Why do I leave Tanzania and come to Kenya? Yeah. <laughs> no, alright. I mean in Africa big. Yeah. You understand? And uh -huh. We can't ask myself, what, a, I'm a Jamaican, no. Jamaicans are everywhere. Mm -hmm. We're not the first to stay put. We're always moving, we're always traveling. So right across the continent, Jamaicans are. Even across the North Pole, you can find Jamaicans. You understand? Uh, even in Art Art Antarctica, mm -hmm. behind the ice wall, there's yeah. Jamaicans there. <laughs> Trust me, Jamaicans are everywhere. If, if there's a country there's no Jamaicans, mm -hmm. that means you're not supposed to go there. Yeah. You see me I say? Because we know about living. Mm -hmm. So what made me come to here to Kenya, I have a lot of Kenyan customers and I've been hearing about Kenya mm -hmm. and I always said that I want to see what Kenya is like but at the time the pandemic closed on the border so I couldn't make that move to come yeah. over here. Kenya was locked down. You know? The similarity between Jamaica and Kenya, let me make sure it's specific between Jamaica and Kenya. The similarity is the reggae. Yeah. And like reggae music yeah. a lot. When I'm in Kenya, it's like I'm in Jamaica. Yeah. Reggae and dancehall play. A matter of fact, they play more dancehall in places here than in Jamaica. Oh, really? Jama Even when you go to like, the public service you know the matatus? Yes, they yeah, play. They play those kind of music. In Jamaica, the public music, the public um, service vehicles, mm -hmm. some of them will play. The government vehicles do not play reggae, do not play music, like dancehall and reggae music. Yeah. But the road, the private vehicles that, like the bus Matasos mm -hmm. in Jamaica is normal bus. It's a normal bus. Yeah. The challenge that we have right now in Kenya, as I say, I can't talk for the whole of Africa because I haven't been to all of Africa. So now I'll tell about Kenya and Tanzania. But since we're in Kenya, let's talk about Kenya. The challenges I have faced, I have faced so far to start this year, the difficulty about the government, the Kenyan government, it changes the whole system, like work permit, um, student um, visa and the whole system immigration system has changed it used to be easier like it used to be like 2000 usd and you can get a permit for a year or two a year or two yeah right now it's like one million 
So it's hard for a normal man, an African man or a normal man who wants to try business, yeah. is going to find 1 million Kenyan shillings. Mm -hmm. That's like 9,000 something US dollars to get a permit. And it lasts just two years. So if you're not doing, and that, I think that's class D, like physical work. But you have other places, you have other classes, then like you have class E, class C. Digital, I think they're coming out to the digital nomad, mm -hmm. like people are doing blogging, YouTubing, online working, yeah. teaching online, stuff like that. Okay. They can get like a class E, something like that. It's in the, it's in the making right now, yeah. but there's other class, you understand? Mm -hmm. But it's still cost. Because if it's not 500,000 Kenyan shillings per year, it's actually 2,000 Kenyan shillings for two years. I mean, sorry? No, 1 million Kenyan shillings for two years. So it's really challenging and difficult to find a million Kenyan shillings yeah. and you don't, you're not sure if you're going to make it back yeah. and that's just the government fee there's more process you have to pay for yeah. to go through yeah. hey, how the food treat you? <laughs> very, very 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 good very good I was literally begging you <laughs> <laughs> literally Please, 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 please yeah, give me the bread pudding. Bread pudding, what dessert? Jamaican dessert. So he's really, really a good friend. Personally, I've tried it. Yeah, man. And they are very, very good. I've also had the lady I'm talking to you about. She was also recommending you, like, like you're a very good cook. You know the lady I'm talking about, right? I just want to show you. Yeah, the brownie. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just like Ricardo does very, 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 very nice food. So personally, I've, I've tried his food and it's good. 10 out of 10. My What's your secret? The secret behind your food, because uh, we just eat to tell you the truth. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My, my hands are different, but to tell you the truth is, it's a whole lot of story. I've been through a lot of ups and downs and stress and. I've been through, I've been through it to get to that to get to that secret point. Like when I was younger, I used to eat from my mom. My mom is a good cook, you know. So I learned I really take from her and my aunt. My aunt. We got my aunt Alana in Jamaica. Yeah, she's the the, the manager of a first Caribbean bank in Ochiri or Sentence. Yes, yeah, so big up my auntie Lana. You understand? So between my auntie and my mom, they're like they're sisters, obviously, and they're good cook. But I learned from my mom. And when my mom left, because she left for, to go to the UK, so she left when I was younger. And being her, I used to go to school, and because I remember when she's around, I used to watch this cooking channel, and she'd be like, Brrr, really nice. And I say, Yo, that's cool. You know, I really want to do that one day. It was fascinating to see them have like carrot, Brrr, onion, Brrr, you know, like that. I say, Okay, then. So it catch my attention. So after I finish homework, or before I start homework, I tune in to watch that program because they teach me more and more. And a, a local station called TVJ. Yeah, Jamaican TV. So learning from that, learn from my mom, and then going to school, I start um, take home economic class. So I I was learning how to sew like a tailor, plumbing, tiling, mason work, welding. I was learning all this stuff in art and in high school but I really take on to music and food because I can do music you know mm -hmm. I can actually do music yeah, yeah. yeah man so I really take on to music and food so because of that I leave from school start go training class like art leave from there start do some um, voluntary work so I can learn more so I work like different different cuisine different different restaurants until I reach a point where I get a good job and I never stay in a job for over a year. Never. Every job, every person that I'm working for, they can't tell up. Every hotel, business establishment, and place I went to, one year. Long as I learn everything on the menu, there's nothing more for me to learn. So sometimes I learn everything like in one month or two months. But I just don't want to leave the work that quick because I'm always in demand. When I'm working here, there's five more persons or people or company or individual asking, begging for me to come to work for them. So, okay, see, they do something I don't like, one year, contract done, left. Yeah, man. Wow. So, Just that's, that. that's really Kenya come to a restaurant? They really... Kenyans? Yeah, man, if I look around, turn the camera, look outside. Look outside, everyone is outside right now. Everyone around. You see, they're Kenyans. They big up the Kenyans and international people come here a lot, but big up the Kenyans then because, as I said, Kenyans say reggae. <laughs> yes, yes, so they know about Jamaican culture.
to move to Africa to start business, first thing I want to tell you guys to budget well. Make sure you budget because Africa is no joke, you know. Let me look at the camera. Africa is no joke, so don't play. No, if you slip, you slide. You get money? So make sure you budget properly. It's not a place that you can go around the corner and get something from someone freely. Nothing is free. In Jamaica, you can wake up in the morning with no money, but you still can put on a pot of food. You can get fruits, vegetables, meat, anything from your neighbors, your community, free as cost, nothing in return. But in Africa, nothing is free. To go to somewhere in the farm, you better have the money. You can't leave the farm with not even a mango. <laughs> so budget well, make sure you have a business plan. Make sure you have a business plan. And make sure you have money. You don't have to have a lot. As long as you have the plan, you come here, network. Connect with someone on the ground because when you come here, when people come here, they're going to need someone to take them around, show them around, connect them with the culture so they can know what the culture is like. New country, new laws, new ways, new rules. So you got to know these stuff. So come in here and link with some people who's already here. So that they can guide you well. Guide you properly. Exactly. So, yeah, man, that's all we can tell you guys. And next thing, take a come to Kenya. Link up me, One Love, number one, L O V E, Love Africa. One Love Africa. That's my YouTube channel. Or you can link up Jam Tour, you know, Ancestor. Or you can link up, well, YouTubers in here. You can watch their channel to the food. Wicked. So, if you want to book a personal chef, if you want to book a prep chef, that's me. I do. A matter of fact, I need to tell you guys this. For those who want personal training, book me. So leave the link of my channel so they can reach out to me. They can reach out to my Instagram, One Love Africa with two A at the end, or they can reach out to Jam One. Just leave the link. They can find me. You understand? So those who want private cooking, catering. Banquet, anything, baby shower, parties, that's me. I deal with it. If you want training, cooking lesson because I teach culinary. So if you guys want to learn to cook, not just Jamaican food, but internationally, hook me up. I'm not just a Jamaican chef, I'm an international chef. I cook anything. You understand? Bring yourself, come on, cook that. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man. I'm asking one.